Good morning. So today we will be learning this extraction of aluminium. So you have all this one now. Uh, ICSC has given you reduced syllabus for 2021. So the video uh, that was uploaded last week is not in your syllabus. But then also in order to know, in order to understand this extraction of aluminium, it is good if you can go through that video once. So today we will be learning extraction of aluminium. Now let me tell you extraction of metals. There are five steps for extraction of all types of metals. Number one, crossing and grinding. Number two, concentration of ore. Number three, oxidation of ore. Number four, reduction of ore. Number five, reduction of this oxide. Number five is purification of metal. So all the extra, all the extraction process, all the extraction process will have these five steps. So extraction of aluminium is also the same. That means first of all, after taking out the ore, after taking out the ore of aluminium. So what is the ore for aluminium? The, the main, the chief source of aluminium is bauxite. So generally we extract aluminium from bauxite because it has got 60%. Bauxite has got 60% of aluminium oxide. Bauxite has 60% of aluminium oxide. So the chief, the main ore of aluminium is bauxite. Okay, and then so bauxite, first of all, bauxite, uh, whenever you will be extracting this bauxite, bauxite will not be uh, the pure bauxite. It is associated with some impurities and these impurities are called gang or matrix. So these impurities are there. So first of all, after getting the extract, after getting this uh, ore, we cross it into fine powder. We cross it into fine powder. And then what is the second step? Concentration of ore. So here aluminium is extracted from its main ore bauxite and what is the formula for bauxite? Al2O3 dot 2H2O. What is the chemical formula of bauxite? Al2O3 dot 2H2O. Bauxite contains 60% aluminium oxide. And what are the impurities associated with this bauxite? Sand, ferric oxide and titanium titanium oxide. So which are the impurities present in bauxite? Sand, ferric oxide and titanium oxide. So these are the impurities. Now, these are impurities. Then first of all what we will do? We will cross, grind, okay, and uh, convert it into fine powder. Then we can uh, separate the impurities manually or physically. So for this what can we do? There are four steps for Concentration of ore, one is gravity separation. Can we use gravity separation for aluminium, for, for bauxite? Yes, we cannot do because it depends on the density difference. It, it, it is based on the different density difference. So, this cannot be separated very easily using uh, gravity separation and magnetic separation also we cannot do because ferric oxide will be separated from rest of the substance and rest of the substance again contains sand, titanium oxide and bauxite. So this also cannot be done. Then flow flotation is especially done for sulfide ore. That means which is the uh, step left, which is the method left, that is chemical method. That is leaching, also called leaching. So for aluminium, for the extraction of aluminium, Concentration of ore can be done by using chemical method. So in chemical method what we do? In chemical method we take a solvent, a reagent in which, in which ore is soluble and impurities are insoluble. Ore is soluble and impurities are insoluble. So this will be the appropriate method for concentration of oxide ore. Concentration of bauxite, chemical method or leaching is the appropriate way because 
there are some solvent in which bauxite gets dissolved get is soluble and rest of the impurities can be separated so for regarding purification of bauxite Bayer has given the process Bayer has given the process and we will be learning Bayer's process for purification of ox uh, this one bauxite so let's see purification of bauxite ore conversion of bauxite into alumina so our intention is to get pure aluminium our intention is to get pure aluminium okay so for getting pure aluminium we have to perform we have to undergo five steps number one processing and grinding so bauxite is grinded finely bauxite bauxite is grinded finely and heated to remove volatile impurities if there are some volatile impurities what do you mean by volatile impurities impurities which can be removed simply by heating so volatile substance means those substances which vaporize easily on heating for example nail polish is volatile if you apply when you apply nail polish then it will get where the some of the substance in nail polish will get evaporated very fast so some of the substance and uh, this one wood and all burns with the flame because of some volatile substance so what are volatile substances substances which easily get evaporated on heating are uh, volatile substances so volatile impurities can be removed by simply heating the ore so and heated to remove volatile impurities it is then heated under pressure with concentrated caustic soda solution for 2 to 8 hours at 140 degrees celsius to 150 degrees celsius and the process is called leaching or chemical method so first of all it is grinded that means crossing and grinding first of all it is grinded into fine powder and is heated so that volatile impurities is removed then second step concentration of ore so bauxite bauxite is uh, this one this uh, crossed or finely powdered ore is kept in a vessel which contains sodium hydroxide solution so where do we put this finely powdered bauxite ore we keep this finely powdered bauxite ore in a vessel containing sodium hydroxide concentrated sodium hydroxide solution caustic soda with sodium hydroxide solution for how long, how long we will be putting this uh, powdered bauxite ore in this uh, caustic so concentrated caustic soda solution for 2 to 8 hours for 2 to 8 hours and then we have to heat then we have to heat it at what temperature we have to heat at 140 degrees celsius to 150 not less than excuse me not less than 140 degrees celsius not more than 150 degrees celsius it has to be between 140 to 150 degrees celsius we have to heat the mixture then on doing so what will happen on doing so bauxite dissolves in sodium hydroxide bauxite dissolves in sodium hydroxide solution caustic sodium hydroxide solution is the solvent is the solvent for concentrating bauxite ore again i am repeating you what is the chief or main ore of aluminium bauxite what is the chemical formula of bauxite al2o3 dot two molecules of water 2s2o okay that is it then uh, number one crossing and grinding will be grinding the ore very nicely and then will be heating so that water impurities can be removed then after doing after finishing step number one we'll come to step number two that is concentration of ore and in concentration of ore among four methods will be used in chemical method that is leaching because it is appropriate why it is appropriate because aluminium this one aluminium 
oxide with water crystallized that is bauxite bauxite dissolves in concentrated caustic soda solution that means sodium hydroxide solution concentrated sodium hydroxide solution leaving behind the impurities leaving behind the impurities so that's why chemical method is chosen for uh, concentration of oxide then for uh, for step number two what we will be doing we will be keeping a use ratio in which we will be keeping and which we will be taking this one uh, concentrated sodium hydroxide solution and then we will be putting powder finely powdered oxide then we have to heat the ratio at 140 degrees celsius to 150 degrees celsius and then what will happen then we can see that oxide dissolves in sodium hydroxide solution and rest of the impurities will not dissolve they will be insoluble they will not be dissolved and then how how can we separate the impurities so oxide dissolves this is the for this is the reaction that is taking place in the process of leaching this is oxide what is this this is oxide so oxide plus sodium hydroxide this is what this is caustic caustic soda caustic soda so oxide when combined with caustic soda when we put oxide in caustic soda solution then we will get this what is this sodium meta aluminate so we will be getting sodium meta aluminate along with the water molecule that means this will completely dissolve in concentrated sodium hydroxide solution then oxide dissolves and forms sodium meta aluminate so what what is called sodium meta aluminate and then what is left behind leaving behind insoluble impurities and whatever is left whatever is left that impurity whichever is left insoluble substance that is left is called red mod is called red mod and and what are the composition of this red mod red mod consists of ferric oxide sand and titanium oxide so what were the impurities present in oxide? Ferric oxide, titanium oxide and sand which can be removed which can be removed by dissolving the ore in uh, concentrated sodium hydroxide solution. So this, these impurities can be removed by filtration. So what we do is we will just allow it to cool because it is very hot then it is filtered then we will go through the process of separation that is filtration so what we do we just pour it into the filtration tank and then we can see that the sodium meta aluminate will be passing through the filter paper in the form of filtrate and whatever is left on the filter paper is these impurities that is also called red mod. That means iron oxide, ferric oxide, titanium oxide, and sand can be separated in the form of residue. And the filtrate, that means we have to focus. Now, what we need is not the residue that is on the filter paper, but what we need now, we need the filtrate which contains sodium meta aluminate. Which contains sodium meta aluminate. Now, what is the further step? So what is the further step? So how can we remove impurities, uh, impurities from this bauxite? By the process called filtration because it will be on the filter paper in the form of residue and whatever we need that is aluminium is in the filtrate in the form of sodium meta aluminate. Then on diluting sodium meta aluminate, then this sodium meta aluminate the sodium meta aluminate this sodium meta aluminate is then hydrolyzed 
diluting means further you have to put water in it. Water in this. Whatever filtrate is there. Okay, you have got filtrate now in the vessel. So in this filtrate you have to add more water. You have to add more water that is dilution. So on diluting the sodium meta eliminate, it will get hydrolyzed. It will get hydrolyzed and cooling to 50 degrees Celsius. So the mixture goes at 142, 150 degrees Celsius. Then, then you have to add more water on it so that the temperature goes down to 50 degrees Celsius. So that the temperature goes down to 50 degrees Celsius. Up to that temperature you have to add water. And on doing so, what you will be getting? On doing so, this sodium beta eliminate will be hydrolyzed. Hydrolysis means addition of water. Hydrolysis. Okay. Hydrolysis means addition of water. Addition of water. So, hydrolyzed. It gets hydrolyzed. So, on adding water to sodium beta aluminate at, and cooling it to 50 degrees Celsius, it will get hydrolyzed. It will get hydrolyzed. Then this sodium will convert to sodium hydroxide and then this aluminium oxide will get convert to aluminium hydroxide. Will get convert to aluminium hydroxide. That means that means this is the second step for purification of aluminium. Second step for purification is separate. This one this is the second step for purification of bauxite. First step, what we have done is we have added so this one concentrated caustic soda and then we got sodium beta aluminate. And what is the second step? This sodium beta aluminate is hydrolyzed on adding a lot of water and reducing the temperature from 140, 150 to 50 degrees Celsius, this sodium beta aluminate converts to sodium hydroxide and aluminium hydroxide. And you know we have learned in chapter 4 analytical chemistry that sodium this aluminium hydroxide is solid. Aluminium hydroxide is solid. This is PPT. Okay. This is insoluble insoluble substance. So, this is solid now. Aluminium hydroxide is solid now. Aluminium hydroxide is solid. It is precipitated. Then this sodium hydroxide, which we got in this step, can be reused for, pure, for uh, this one, for purification of aluminium again. So, the filtrate containing sodium hydroxide. This is the filtrate which contains sodium hydroxide and aluminium hydroxide on our addition on for the dilution is again used to extract aluminium from bauxite. So this sodium hydroxide is again used for for extracting aluminium from bauxite. Again this aluminium this sodium hydroxide can be used as reagent as solvent for uh, bauxite, for leaching, this sodium hydroxide can be further used. Then this aluminium hydroxide, which is here, aluminium hydroxide, our intention is not uh, to get sodium, our product here is not this one, this is byproduct. Our product is aluminium hydroxide. What is our product, what we wish, what we want, we want this aluminium hydroxide, not sodium hydroxide. So, what to do with this aluminium hydroxide chain? First of all, it was bauxite, aluminium hydroxide with the, uh, this one, bihydrate, bihydrate, hydrated salt. Then we got sodium metal aluminate from there. Then from sodium metal aluminate on further hydrolysis, we got sodium hydroxide and aluminium hydroxide. Now we are with aluminium hydroxide. So, what is the next step? So what is the next step? Next step is the precipitate. The precipitate, which is the precipitate? Aluminium hydroxide is the precipitate. This precipitate is filtered. This precipitate is filtered. Again, why? Because aluminium hydroxide is insoluble. So again we will filter it. So 
in the filtrant will get sodium hydroxide and on the tissue paper in the form of residue will be getting aluminium hydroxide. So here in the first step the residue was of no use because that was impurity. Now you should not throw this residue because this is something which we need that is aluminium hydroxide and the filtrate again can be reused for further purification of oxide. So this aluminium hydroxide on the filter paper, okay, in the form of precipitate is washed, again we have to wash so that uh, some of the impurities can be washed away, washed and then you have to dry and ignite and then you have to heat. So what are the steps to be followed after step 2? After step 2, in step 2 what are the things you got? In step 2 you got sodium hydroxide in the form of filtrate and aluminum hydroxide as precipitate. So on filtration you got residue as aluminum hydroxide and filtrate as sodium hydroxide. So this, this residue is uh, washed so that some of the impurities can be removed and then dry it. You have to spray it so that it will get dry. So that it will get dry. And then you have to heat again. Ignite means you have to heat it strongly. You have to heat it again at 1000 degrees Celsius. You have to heat at 1000 degrees Celsius. So on heating this aluminium hydroxide, the solid substance will get, will get aluminium oxide. What will get? Aluminium oxide along with water. So we'll get aluminium oxide now. We'll get aluminium oxide. That means step 2 is over. Step 2 is over. Concentration of O is over. That means from bauxite, from bauxite now we got aluminium oxide. Aluminium oxide. So this uh, step, this one, now extraction of metal step number 2 is over, that means concentration of O is over. So in concentration of O, there are 3 steps. Number 1 step is uh, this one, bauxite to sodium metal aluminate. Step number 2, sodium metal aluminate is hydrolyzed to uh, sodium hydroxide and aluminium hydroxide. And step number three, this aluminium hydroxide is washed, dried, and again ignited, again heated at 1000 degrees Celsius, and we'll be getting aluminium oxide. So, this is the step how we get aluminium oxide from bauxite. Now, step number three for all extraction of metal is oxidation of ore. Oxidation of O. Okay, so oxidation can be done for uh, in two ways that is roasting and calcination. Roasting and calcination. But you can see here it is already in the form of oxide. It is already in the form of oxide. So no need of step 3 for uh, extraction of aluminium. For extraction of aluminium, no need of step number 3. They may ask you a question. For extraction of aluminium, which oxidation process is used, roasting or calcination, then you will be saying none of the process because it is already oxide. So further oxidation is no need. So step number 3 is no need in extraction of aluminium. Then after step number 3, we go to reduction of oxide. Reduction of oxide. So reduction of oxide again. Uh, last class, I say you reduction of oxide can be done in many ways using some of the reducing agents. For example, iron, zinc, lead can be reduced. Iron, zinc, and copper can be reduced by using some of the common reducing agent like carbon and carbon monoxide and hydrogen. But as I have said you in electrometallurgy that 
the reactive, highly reactive metals, those metals which lie on top of the reactivity series, they are potassium, calcium, sodium, magnesium, aluminium, they cannot be reduced by common reducing agent like carbon, carbon monoxide and hydrogen. So, that's why they are reduced by passing electricity through them. They are reduced by the process called electrolysis. By the process called electrolysis. Then only they can be reduced. Why? Because aluminium oxide is a very stable oxide. It's a very stable oxide. It cannot break very easily. So in order to get uh, from aluminium oxide, okay, from aluminium oxide, you have to get aluminium. What you have to get? Aluminium. And you have to remove oxygen. You have to remove oxygen, you have to get aluminium. That means you have to break aluminium oxide. Okay, you have to break aluminium oxide to get aluminium and oxygen. So this breaking process in chemistry is called reduction. Reduction, that means removal of oxygen is reduction. Removal of oxygen is reduction. So to get aluminium, from aluminium oxide, you need to break this aluminium oxide. But this breaking cannot be done by using common reducing agent like carbon, carbon monoxide and hydrogen. Because aluminium oxide is a very stable oxide. It's a very stable oxide. Its affinity towards oxygen is very high. So, so for the same reason, for this reason only, we use electrolytic reduction. We use electrolytic reduction. So aluminum oxide is very stable oxide so it is not reduced by common reducing agents like carbon, carbon monoxide or hydrogen. So electrolytic reduction is used. So how do we use electrolytic reduction? Let's see now. Okay. Now previously previously uh, the, this aluminum was even expensive than gold because it was very tough for the extraction of aluminium. So, electro, this is the difficulty faced in obtaining aluminium from alumina. So, electrolytic reduction can be done in molten state. So, for electrolytic reduction, last class I have said you, for electrolysis we need a solvent, we need a solvent called electrolyte. Okay, because in solid form, metals do not conduct electricity. Okay, in solid form, some metals do not conduct electricity. So, for conducting electricity, they need to be in molten form. Some of the metals, okay. Metals generally conduct electricity when they are in ionic form. So, first of all, we need to make solvent. We need to make solvent. So for making solvent, it has to be melted. So electrolytic reduction can be done in molten state only. Alumina, alumina, uh, this uh, aluminium oxide, whatever we got, okay? Aluminium oxide, this aluminium oxide, whatever we got in the process in the step number two is alumina. This is also called alumina. This is also called alumina. So alumina, molten state, alumina melts at approximately 2050 degrees Celsius. In order to melt alumina, you need to rise the temperature by 2050 degrees Celsius. Then only this alumina melts. Then only you can make electrolyte of alumina. Otherwise you cannot. So, if, but what is happening is at this temperature, if you heat alumina up to 2050 degrees Celsius, aluminium vaporizes. That means, that means melting, uh, melting point of alumina is 2050 degrees Celsius. So, addition of cryolite can enhance conductivity as well as it lowers melting point of alumina. So alumina can be fused, can be melted. Okay, fusion means melt also. Fusion means to break, melt. So, 
fusion temperature fusion temperature was 2050 degrees celsius without adding cryolite but after adding cryolite the fusion temperature lowers to 950 degrees celsius and this can be done by adding cryolite only and not only that addition of cryolite enhances conductivity also so conductivity can also be improved by adding cryolite so without cryolite the thing which seems impossible because it melts at 2050 degrees celsius but aluminium vaporizes by this temperature so it is impossible to do electrolytic reduction of alumina but, uh, but addition of cryolite has made the work very easy because it lowers the melting point lowers the fusion temperature of alumina to 950 degrees celsius and it enhances uh, conductivity also okay then then uh, reduction of alumina can be done okay reduction can that means aluminium cannot be reduced cannot be reduced by some of the common uh, reducing agents like carbon carbon monoxide and hydrogen carbon carbon monoxide and hydrogen so it needs to be done by electrolytic reduction so electrolytic reduction of fused alumina hull helps process and these are some of the things we need for this process for reduction of alumina so electrolytic cell electrolytic cell is nothing but a container a container this is a container okay this is a container this container where this container where uh, where electrolysis can be performed is called electrolytic cell this is electrolytic cell that means electrolytic cell is a vessel is a vessel in which electrolysis is done so what is electrolytic cell it is a vessel in which electrolysis is done so for electrolysis of uh, for, for the reduction of used alumina we need to take a special type of electrolytic cell the design has to be somewhat different so let's we'll see right it is what it is it is made up of iron this electrolytic cell is made up of iron it is iron tank okay oh, and what is the shape of the tank rectangular rectangular iron tank with a sloping bottom it is a rectangular iron tank with a sloping bottom you can see this yeah this is rectangular iron tank this is electrolytic cell so this outer container this is electrolytic cell this is made up of iron this is this is this is made up of this is made up of iron so this is rectangular you can see this is rectangular tank made up of iron and it has slope this is sloping tank okay this is slope this slope is made so why this slope is made so that so that molten aluminium can be collected if it is like this it will not flow but if it is sloping then liquid can flow very easily so it is designed in such a way that liquid alumina, molten aluminium will flow. Molten aluminium will flow. So this this is electrolytic cell. And the solution used here in the form of solvent. Okay, electrolyte is elect. Yeah. So sloping bottom of the tank. The sloping bottom of the tank facilitates the removal of the molten alumina so what is the function why there is sloping bottom in the tank in order to remove molten alumina aluminium in order to remove molten aluminium there is a sloping bottom the bottom of this electrolytic series sloping why is sloping 
in order to remove molten aluminium. The tank is lined with gas carbon and the, the tank, this, uh, the tank that we have seen is lined with carbon, is lined with carbon. Then what is another thing we need for this process that is electrolyte. So what is electrolyte? Electrolyte is the substance that conducts electricity during the process of electrolysis. Electrolyte is the substance that conducts electricity, is the solution that conducts electricity during the process of electrolysis. So for reduction of alumina, electrolyte is the mixture of molten alumina 20%. Cryolite 60% and flow spar 20%. So electrolyte for reduction of alumina contains a mixture of alumina, cryolite and flow spar. So alumina 20%, cryolite 60%. Why cryolite 60%? Because it enhances conductivity as well as it reduces. It reduces the fusion temperature to 950 degrees Celsius. That's why cryolite is and floor spar is also added, floor spar is also added which is of 20% and I will be talking about the importance of this floor spar in next